So the next thing we're going to do, the next piece of syntactic sugar we're going to add is we're actually going to add something that looks kind of like a data structure. We're going to give a way that we can actually index into lists next. So we're going to define this function that we're going to call lookup. So the idea of lookup is I hand this function a bit string and I hand it a bit string representing an index. And it will tell me in the bit string that was given, what is the bit at the index? So given a bit string and an index, give me the bit at that index. When we define this function, we're actually going to define our function in terms of some value k, where k is basically telling us how big our index is. So when I'm describing this function, I'm not describing just one function, I'm describing an infinite number of functions. One where k is equal to one, another where k is equal to two, another where k is equal to three, and so forth. So the way that this function is going to work is we're going to say that I give you a big long bit string here. So I'm going to give you this big long bit string. How long is it? Well, we have two components to this bit string. We have the string that we're going to be indexing into. It's going to be of length 2 to the k for whatever k was over here. And we also have the index we're going to be using to, to find the bit, to look, to look into that bit string. That index is k bits long. The subscript k for which version of lookup we're talking about matches the length of the index in bits. And then our output's going to be that one bit at the location that we indexed in the bit string. So the idea is that if I give you this bit string x that's 2 to the k bits long, and I give you this bit string i that's k bits long, if I think of, of i as a natural number between 0 and 2 to the k minus 1, if I think of i as a natural number, I want to return the bit x sub i the ith bit of x. So as an example here, if I have k is equal to 3, that means I have 8 bits. So this is bit 0, this is bit 1, this is bit 2, this is bit 3, 4, 5, 7. So these are my bits at the various indices. i is telling me which bit in this string to return. So in this case, i is 2. So I want to return the thing at index 2, which means I'm returning the 0 here. This is the goal of lookup. We're going to be able to index into a string. So the first 2 to the k bits of our input, that's considered to be that bit string we're indexing into. The last k bits are the index that's, that we're going to use to pick the bit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show that no matter what k is, I can always find a NAND cricket a NAND circuit <laughs> um, that computes lookup sub k. And then I'm also going to show some bound for the number of gates we're going to need to do that. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about how it is that we can show that we can find a NAND gate to do lookup. And we're essentially going to do this by induction. So we're going to have an inductive argument for why it is that we're going to be able to do this. So the idea is that we're going to define lookup sub k in terms of lookup sub k minus 1. So here we're trying to do our lookup where k is equal to 3. And in order to do that, we're going to define lookup where k is equal to 3 in terms of lookup k minus 1. So we're looking at an index of size 2. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to say, well, let's consider that we're trying to look at index i in our bit string. If the first bit of i is 0, then whatever bit we're looking for is in the first half of the string. So in this case, if I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, if the first bit of my index is 0, then the largest number I could be talking about is 3. So I must be talking about something in the first half of the string. On the other hand, if the first bit of my index was 1, the smallest number I could be talking about was 4. So whatever bit I'm looking for must be in the second half of the string. So once I've established that I must be looking in the first half of the string, I can just use the rest of the index to look into the half of the string that I identified. So now I can use the last two bits of i and just do a lookup into the four bits of the first half. Whatever bit in the half string, 
we're indexing with the one shorter index is the same as whatever we were looking up in the larger original problem. So in this case, we're looking at index two. So zero, one, two, three. And we can see that index two here was the index we were looking at there as well. How is it that we're going to find the index down here for k is equal to two? Well, we can convert that into a lookup for k is equal to one. So let's look at uh, k is equal to one. So in this case, we said that our lookup must be in the second half. So it must be one of these two and our index was zero in this case. So what does this look like? When we have two bits in our string and we have a one bit index, so this is zero one. So we're gonna, we're gonna be returning this one. So whenever the input was zero, we return the first one. Whenever the index was, was one, we, we return the second one. So if this is like i, and this is x sub zero, and this is x sub one, then if we do lookup sub one of x zero, x one, i, this is going to be equal to, or if i was true in this case, if i was one, we want to return x one. If i was false, we want to return x zero. So lookup sub one is just a rewriting of if. And then once we have lookup sub one, we can do lookup sub two, because lookup sub two, we can just figure out by looking at one bit of i which half to look in. With two ifs, we're going to be able to do lookup of two. And with lookup of two, we're going to be able to do lookup of three, and with three we can do four and so forth. Yes. Yeah, so, so when I look at the index, in our example where k is equal to three, when I look at my index, if the first bit of my index is zero, the largest number I could be I could be indexing is three. The largest value the index could be is three, since I knew the first bit was zero. And all of the indices from zero to three are in the first half of the bit string. If the index was one, the number I was representing must have been at least four in the second half of the string. And once I've identified which half I'm in, then I've got a smaller index problem to deal with. This is how we can define lookup. What does lookup look like when I have a k bit index? So here my last k bits are the index. My first two to the k bits are my string. How can I find lookup sub k? What I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the first bit of i was a zero, then I want to do whatever the one smaller lookup problem was on the first half of the string. So I start with bit one in my index rather than bit zero. And I'm doing a lookup of that index into the first half of my original string. Because I must have been looking at a small index, that first bit being a zero, my index must have been small. So I must have been looking in the first half of my string. So I just do a lookup in the first half of my string. If on the other hand, the first bit was a one, then I'm gonna returning whatever this value is from my if. So I'm going to be doing an index, ignoring the first bit in the second half of the string. When we do lookup k, the way that we figure out the value of lookup sub k is we're going to do a lookup sub k minus 1, two lookups of size k minus 1, and then which one do we keep? Well, whichever one we get from an if with the first bit, depended on what the first bit was. How can I do k minus 1? Well, we can define that in terms of k minus 2. So we have kind of an inductive construction of how this looking up into our bit strings works. So we can say, well, how do we look up into a bit string of size two, so that is our indexes of size one, if we just reorder our inputs, then it's just an if. So whenever i was a zero, we wanted x sub zero. Whenever i was a one, we wanted x sub one. So this is the same thing as the if. That now when we're saying whenever the if was zero, we're going to get x sub zero. And whenever the if was a one, we're going to get x sub one. Whatever bit we looked up in lookup one was the same as the bit that we returned with if. So now we know we can do lookup one. Since we can do if with only nands, we can do lookup one with only nands. Now let's look at lookup two. So lookup two, we have four bits as our input and two bits as our index. 
in the case that our first bit happened to be a zero, we can use the second bit to select the right index of our first half. And in the case where our, what we're looking up should be in the second half, we can use that second bit in order to figure out which index it should have been. Ignoring the first bit, where would we be if we knew that we were in the second half? Where would we be looking if we knew that we were looking in the first half? And then we're going to use an if to keep one. So look something up in the first half, look something up in the second half, and then using this if, figure out if we should have been looking in the first half all along or the second half all along. And we can continue this. So we can start looking up 3 and 4. So what is look up 3? Well, look up 3, we have 8 bits as our input bit string. We have 3 bits as our index. So we can use look up 2 to find the value in the case we should be looking in the first half. We can use look up 2 to find the value in the case we should have been looking in the second half, and then figure out which one was the right answer with an if. And then how can we do look up 4? We're going to use look up 3 to find something in the first half. We can use look up 3 to find something in the second half, and then use an if to find out which half we should have been looking in all along. And then we can use the same pattern for look up 5. So if I wanted to do look up 5, um, this is going to be messy, but I would have like twice as many input bits here, so I need to copy and paste all of this garbage again. So there we go, we have twice as many input bits, and we're going to have um, one more bit of our index, and then we're going to be looking at lookup 4. So in order to do lookup 5, we're going to look at lookup 4 to look in the first half or the second half, and then we use an if with the first bit to figure out which half we should have been in, and so forth. For any k that you give me, we can find a lookup k, defined in this recursive way. So because I can do if, I can do lookup 1. Because I can do lookup 1 and if, I can do lookup 2. Because I can do lookup 2 and if, I can do lookup 3. So all of these, now I could, with effort, convert into exclusively NAND gates.